first, 2019 to the 30th, uh, the pay is $120,438. Uh, year two and three will be that or as amended, amended by the board. Uh, as I said, the 260 days, health insurance, as with the other administrators, superintendent will be eligible to participate in the group insurance plan. Uh, Dental Insurance Corporation pays $174 per year toward desired coverage. Uh, the medical, dental, long-term life, electronics. Uh, corporation provides cell phone and service valued at $400 per year, plus iPad and laptop computer for business. Annuity, the employer will make a contribution on behalf of the superintendent to annuity in an amount of $5,000 annually. Superintendent may attend such state and national conferences as deemed appropriate and as reported to the board. Reimbursement for expenses in accordance with board policy shall be permitted. Uh, mileage will be reversed, reimbursed. Leave days will have a term value and have no cash value other than for the intended purpose and use. Leave days shall not accumulate more than 185 days. Uh, the corporation requires superintendent to be a member of the Indiana Association of Public School Superintendents and the Indiana <coughs> Association of School Business Officials. This is an estimated cost of the corporation is $863 per year. ISTRF uh, employee contribution. Let's see that the rate paid for certified employees currently set 3% of salary, which would be $3,613.14. Employer shall provide cell phone and service, iPad, laptop, computer. Uh, other benefits uh, provided to 12 month administrators of the school corporation that are not inconsistent with the superintendent's contract. The superintendent is evaluated by the board at least once a school year. If the superintendent is evaluated as either highly effective or effective, then the board may, but is not required to, in its sole discretion, grant the superintendent a base salary increase. Work product of the superintendent that is prepared in the scope of her employment is the property of the school corporation. The superintendent is required to direct her full-time attention to the business of the school corporation, not to outside activities unless specifically approved by the Board of Trustees. The school corporation will defend, hold harmless, and indemnify the superintendent in legal action involving incidents in which the superintendent was legally acting within the scope of her employment and the superintendent's contract may be terminated prior to the end of a term as permitted under state law, in effect at the time of the proposed termination. So at this time, it's a public hearing. We've got to open the floor to anyone who'd like to speak. I'd like to ask you uh, to limit to three minutes. Uh, please state your name before you speak. The board will listen to your uh, uh, statements uh, we will not be answering the questions at this time. So, do we have someone that would like to start? If any. Okay. Oh, Brad, go ahead. I, I realize there's been some angst. My name is Brad Weaver. Uh, I live here in Rochester. I'm a parent. Uh, there's been some angst because some certain media outlets report some things different ways and I realize that there's always two if not more sides to every story. Um, there are some parents who may be upset or things like that but I will tell you one thing that I really appreciate. In our community we have to deal with people not things all the time and the one thing I've noticed about Mrs. Vance is she cares about the kids. She doesn't care about what the thought process is as far as if it's negative, she worries about the kids. We've all seen previous superintendents, no names. She's at basketball games, she's at football games, she's at plays, she's at choir concerts because she's involved about the kids. And Tom, I'm looking specifically at you and not at Jana because I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart. So I ask all of you, and I know there are some who are seasoned members, and I know there are some who have less time on, those who have less time on, I will tell you, if you didn't know, and the public doesn't know, that Mrs. Vance, as far as I know, is still on a national board with other superintendents and asks for her opinion. So I respectfully request that uh, her contract be renewed, 
because she does care about the kids and we couldn't have a better person than her in charge right now. Thank you for your time. Yes, My name is Tanya McKee. I think it's time we stop burying our heads in the sand and take a look at our corporation overall. When my students started here at Rochester in, back in 2005, Rochester was the shining star of the state. We had cutting edge curriculum. We had cutting edge technology. We had people coming from all over the world to look at our school to see how we did things. No one comes to look at Rochester anymore. Kids are leaving in droves and you need to ask yourself why. These changes started when Mrs. Vance became superintendent. We need a superintendent with leadership skills and a backbone, neither of which she has. If you come to her with a problem, she'll be the first person to delegate it off to someone else. And I respectfully ask you, do not renew her contract. Anyone else? Okay, if not, we'll adjourn the public hearing on the superintendent's contract and resume our regular board meeting. Uh, next item is the uh, financial report. Approval of claims 15785 through 15957 for a total of $1,599,406.19. Board members, you've had time to through the claims any questions not I'll entertain a motion to approve the claims so moved. Oh, I'll second okay motion by Jenny second by Kyle and our discussion all in favor right in okay we're security seven zero payrolls <coughs> same thing had opportunity to look them over any questions motion to approve I'll make a motion. I'm sorry. Rick? I'll make a motion. Okay. <clears throat> motion by Joe. Second by Rick. Yes, sir. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carried. Send zero. Funds report. Todd, please. Okay. <clears throat> In the education fund through June 30th, 2019, um, monthly receipts of $1,091.72. At expenses in June of $802,638.83 and the monthly transfer of $138,000 to the operations fund um, left us with a cash balance of $270,565.28. Debt service fund, we had receipts in June of $1,604,783.66. Expenses in June of two million eighteen thousand two hundred seventy four dollars and two cents, and left us with a cash balance of one million five hundred twenty thousand one hundred forty seven dollars and fifty five cents, and the operations fund uh, receipts of one million five hundred ten thousand six hundred six dollars and ninety cents. The transfer from the education fund one hundred thirty eight thousand dollars. And monthly expenses in June of six hundred two thousand nine hundred ninety one and sixty cents. Our cash balance at the end of June is two million five hundred fifty five thousand five hundred seventy six dollars and sixty eight cents. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions? I don't entertain a motion to approve the funds. I'll make the motion. Okay. Motion by Stacy, second by Stacy. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most curious. Okay, we'll move to the consent items. Uh, we'll group all of these together for the vote. But we have the minutes of uh, June 17th, regular board meeting. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the June 20th, uh, regular board meeting. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the July 8th special board meeting. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the July 8th study session. Any additions or corrections? And certification of the uh, 2019 executive session. Any questions on that? Okay, I'll need a motion to approve all the consent items. So moved. 
Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. And second by Stacy. Any other discussion? All in favor? And Mr. Carey said here. Uh, next item under uh, information and analysis approval of food service bid. I believe Kathy Wilkinson is here to walk us through the process. We are part of the Northern Indiana Educational Service Center who helps with the bid process, helps narrow that down, and keeps us in compliance with the state. And Kathy, I think, will walk you through those bids where we landed for food service and then also uh, prices for school lunches. Um, like Jenna said, that we go through NISI, which is the Northern Indiana, and they do all our RFPs or our food bids for us. And then we meet once a month and we go over what items are available, what, what is out there for us, um, and what companies want to bid on us. Um, Rochester is in an area where we don't get many bids, so as far as like bread, we can only get one bidder. Um, Dean's, which is our milk, we can only get the one bid. Um, food, uh, we had quite a few bid on it, and everybody in the... Um, committee gets to decide who we choose and that's how we place our bids and that's who we uh, award for each year. Anybody have any questions? Not all. I uh, need a motion to approve the uh, food service bid. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. A second. Second by Joe. No <coughs> discussion. All in favor? Okay, most current says zero. School meal pricing for the 2019-2020 school year. And that we do through the state. Um, I have to put in a state report with all of the meals that were served in the month of October, and they do the calculations on that for us. And according to what we are charging and how many meals we serve, they decide how much I need to raise our prices. We did not have to raise our prices last year, but this year they are requiring 10 cents across the board. So that would be for all elementary, <coughs> secondaries, and uh, adults as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, the motion to approve the meal pricing for the 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Hey, motion by Rick. Second. Second by Jenny. In your discussion. All in favor? Mr. Carey, 7 0. Approval of bids for Columbia and High School Kitchen Air Conditioning Projects. So we still have two cafeterias in the district which do not have air conditioning, um, and that would be Rochester High School and then Columbia Elementary. When we went through the last series of uh, HVAC installation, we made sure that we had those connectors ready to go. Uh, Kathy's um, department with food service runs on separate line items and so she has enough in her account to pay for the transition to air conditioning so it will not come out of operational funds it will come out of the food service account funds and we are proposing to go with Herman and Getz uh, their bid was eighty eight thousand six hundred and forty dollars and again then all of our kitchens will be hooked up to air conditioning and that will come from the food service line items Thank you. Any questions? If not, I need a motion to approve the bids for the Columbia High School Kitchen Air Conditioning Project. I make a motion. Okay, motion by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right now. Okay, motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Approval or approved transportation handbook changes and updated bus routes. Don King will be here to walk us through all of that, um, the Indiana code changes and law changes that we need to go through. Have all of you seen a copy of the handbook change, changes we made in the handbook? Do you have any questions about any of those? Don, I didn't, on the bus aid one, at least on my device, I didn't have anything highlighted. I saw highlighted ones on the bus driver. The only places we made any changes was what was highlighted. If we didn't, if there's nothing highlighted on the bus aid, then we didn't make any changes on that one. Okay. So the highlighted things were the only ones we changed spots on. Uh, some of them was just a word or two here or there. Um, one of the big things, and we did this last year, was uh, the, uh, oh, what I want to say it is the 
student control and the student behavior. If a student gets out of hand, and okay, then we set up a deal with the with the help of our SRO Skeeter there last year, came in and talked to the drivers, where the student gets one, two, three strikes and you're out. And it's a very very easy plan to follow. It's highlighted in here for you. There's a flow chart for it for the first offense. You sit down and have a chat with the student and write them up on the chat log. The second offense, you chat with the student, you write them up and you contact their parent. And it may not be the same offense every time, but we found once we instituted that, and the kids found out we meant business, that our behavior on the buses got a lot better. So that was something we were really happy with and made that change last year in that and put that in there. So, But the highlight of it this year is we put it in the handbook. It's there, it'll be there for anybody that wants to see it and read it, uh, and we're very happy with that. But other than that, our changes were just all minor. Uh, no big changes, just uh, including that. Any questions from anybody? We're gone Monday night. A week from tonight is your training with the bus drivers and Correct. all of the updates. Next Monday night here on the 29th, we'll have our bus driver meeting, annual bus driver meeting here. We'll, we'll do our videos to take our yellow card test, our safety test. Uh, we're starting that meeting at 4 o'clock, watching the videos, having supper, and then we'll pass out the routes and discuss everything and get things ready to go for August 5th. Uh, and while I have the floor, I need a bus driver. If anybody's interested in driving a bus, I, I had one uh, resign last week and everything, and I'm in dire need of a bus driver to fill a spot. So if you know somebody that's got a license and wants a job, send them my way, please, because uh, we can sure use one. Thank you, Don. I like that. Speak right to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll need to uh, approve the transportation handbook changes and updated bus rules. I have a motion. So moved. Okay. Hang on. Jenny first for a and second. Sandy for a second. In your discussion. All in favor? Approval to recycle technology items. I think Mr. Kistler will walk us through some items that we need to uh, work on disposing of. Yeah, this list that I have sent to you guys uh, as a list of uh, old computers, um, just things that we've been clearing out, um, things that have died over throughout the school year that um, are no longer needed and just have um, either out of date or um, are broken. So most of these items are all just scrap, ready to go to recycling. Um, I'll, I'll be sending you guys another list with um, monitors and things like that that we'll be putting in an auction later. So things that we were able to salvage and, and just excess. Scott, are any of the DVD VHS players operational, do you know? Um, the ones that we tested, um, they were, they were, most of them were broken, like the arm or the things wouldn't come out or they wouldn't shoot out. So most of that stuff has, uh, that's why we get it because we just put them in our piles ready for recycling. So most of that stuff is just all something wrong with it, whether it won't play or different types of things wrong with them. I was just curious because there seems to be a secondary market for the VHS players, people who still have VHS, but of course it's not sold anywhere. So that might be something, if it was working, that would sell in an auction. But if it's okay. broken, then it's like okay. Yeah, most of them are broken. A lot of them have like the, the DVD players, but some of them are, are like a combo where the DVD player is broken and maybe the VHS might be working. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's something we could look at and see if just the VHS part is working. Yeah. If I can find the VHS. I probably have something. I was like, "It's that you borrowed and tested." I have a few. The problem is that like the VHS is you don't know it's not working until it keeps saying. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you, Scott. The motion to approve the recycled technology items. Motion. Okay, motion by Rick. I'll oh. second. Second by Stacy. And discussion. All in favor? Okay, most carry send here. Okay, donations. We just have one donation, correct? Mm -hmm. 
First source bank reflectors for all students K through 12. What exactly are the reflectors? The reflectors are much like Woodlawn Hospital donated as well. They attach to the student's backpack or you can put them on their clothing attire that have um, that they light up and they also provide reflection. So it would be um, a second donation along that same line to give to students who may have lost or misplaced others. Good idea. Okay, need a motion to approve the donations. Make a motion. Okay, motion by Joe. Second. Second by Sandy, inner discussion. All in favor? Okay, most curious. I'd like to uh, thank First Source Bank. Uh, that's a very useful and uh, uh, generous offer. I mean, anytime we provide safety for our students, that's a, that's a win. Okay. Other person, or moving on to personnel report. We have. Hiring, Jamie Bach, Hyatt Directed Study, pay rate $8.61. Dana Tucker, super <coughs> substitute bus driver. Uh, Lee Allen Raymer, High Earth Science Biology, salary of $43,700. Resignation, Bethany Grudge, Riddle Instructional Assistant, effective July 15, 2019. Andrew Kindig, Middle School Building Technician, effective 82 of 19. Olivia Harris, Technology Coordinator, High Effective, 67 of 19. Rachel Hazelby, High Computer Science, Digital Media, uh, Effective, 72 of 19. FMLA, Tanya Rensberger, July 8, 2019, to unknown date at this time. We have a retirement, Shirley Sweck, Effective, 82 of 19. CIA coaches, Michelle Briette, Columbia, a stipend of $3,000. Kim Bill, Columbia, stipend $3,000. Alicia Ramsey, Columbia, stipend $1,500. Amy Banks, Columbia, stipend $1,500. Then we have a long list of uh, athletic coaching recommendations. Uh, we have uh, additional Okay, additional hiring, Zachary Clevenger, uh, the high project lead, the way manufacturing, a salary of $34,500. Uh, Lorraine Hagen, Columbia Preschool, substitute for Stacia Conrad while doing her student teaching until beginning of November 2019. Pay rate of $140 a day, long-term sub-pay. As I stated, we have a, a long list of uh, coaches board you had time to look them all over tell them there's still more on the bottom of the pardon there's, there's more on the bottom of the sheet uh besides Zachary oh we got two more there okay hiring of Bailey Briggs Columbia Kindergarten salary of 35,650 summer intercession uh, Nathan Basham middle school hourly rate of $31.08 Ken Hughes middle school hourly rate $58.02 Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions? I got one. Okay. <clears throat> um, directed to you or to Jason? Jason, I mean, I'll be willing to answer this. <clears throat> okay, question. the uh, Columbia interview process, can you tell me, take me through that process and just see that it was fair throughout, the candidates were there for both interviews? And <clears throat> for the most recent one or just the Yeah, the one that was added today. Yeah, we, uh, we had 17 uh, applicants for that position. Um, it was narrowed down to uh, six candidates to interview, and then we had a secondary set. We didn't find anybody uh, within that initial interview. So we set the times. I got a committee together that was available for uh, pretty much the morning uh, on one of the days, and um, we called all of the people that were uh, wanted to, we wanted to interview, and set times up with them and we had uh, one interview that uh, one candidate was unable to make it during that time so I offered a uh, alternate time and uh, or a uh, phone interview which uh, are not uncommon uh, I've done phone interviews uh, Skype interviews all the way out of people in Colorado and, uh, K 
candidate chose a, uh, an alternate day, so I um, contacted everybody that was on the original committee to get who I could get in, and I was able to get in a uh, partial committee, not, not the exact same uh, people, and we conducted that interview, and then we conducted the other interviews, and my committee made a recommendation that I forwarded to the board for approval. So the one, the one candidate had, a, I mean, I guess what you're down to is you have different uh, amount of candidates for each interview, and you said there was a, a candidate that elected a different day, and not all of them could meet that day, your, your, your interview committee. Yeah, I mean, it's summertime. I can't, I can't dictate you know, who can make it, who can't. But the original committee had already been set, and I felt that, um, I, I mean, I was trying to accommodate a, a candidate that couldn't be there that day with that committee, so I contacted my committee and asked them to come if they can, and fortunately I had a few that were able to make it to the, the alternate time. And, uh, Thank you. We did. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> Not only a motion to approve the personnel report. That's a moment. Okay, close my Jenny. Second. Second by Rick. Any other discussion? All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. <coughs> okay, under, under personnel matters, I'd like to take over. I believe that. Go ahead. Were you going to do coaching assignments? Pardon? Coaching. Coaching assignments? I, I included that all together. Oh. Is that okay? Or yeah. You want to do it separate? Yeah, if everybody had a chance to look at it. Yeah, I asked if they all had an opportunity to come over. So, sorry. Okay. It's good to check those okay. kids. <laughs> okay. I'll move on to the uh, MOU. Sure. I believe Sheriff Sailors is here to walk the board through and answer any questions in regards to uh, a MOU that he has been working diligently on. I want to thank you for your time and energy on this. Yes, Connie. Okay. I'm standing over there so she can get you on the camera. Watch me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> close up a picture of you. Thank you. I have a. Chris, you need a chair? No, I'm fine. <clears throat> I can stand. It's fine. Um, I guess uh, kind of know where we're at at this point uh, with all this, but uh, with the uh, cooperation, I, I forwarded the, the board, I think, and, and uh, Attorney Wagner and Superintendent, the uh, memorandum understanding we had that I have with CAST and with our school resource officer there. and. After some discussion and involving um, some of the recent events, um, we'd asked the, the prosecutor to, to kind of give some information. I know Ted reviewed some things and, and collaboratively worked through that. And actually there was a few things in this MOU that included some, some recent state statute changes that I even didn't have in my CASTA MOU, which I'm gonna have to address with the superintendent there as well. Some recent legislative changes, but anyway. Um, I guess uh, at this point, um, what we, what you should have in front of you, um, I think it uh, kind of defines some things maybe that were a little better than what you've had in the past um, from that standpoint. Um, I guess that's open to interpretation by this board, but um, one of the things um, going forward with this and trying to look for a solution, obviously the schools in my county um, feel somewhat responsible at that point as, as well, but uh, I, I talked to my board of commissioners um, and to the county council as well and um, some of the discussion and I had Mrs. Vance attend that meeting in case they had questions and uh, it's kind of their, their feeling that we ought to move forward with this uh, the best we can and they would like to see me be an employee of the sheriff's office. So um, having thrown that out there as a, as a possibility. I think at the last meeting at your works meeting, I offered a suggestion possibly given the powers as a special deputy and so forth. But I think uh, with all concern and some of the, the issues that were, that, um, were brought up, um, that uh, we look at that route. 
and with that, obviously, the MOU kind of spells out some of those those things. So, I'll try to answer any questions you have, or if you need some further explanation on some of those things. Okay, board, have any questions? I do not. Yeah. Is this a six-month MOU or is this a one-year MOU? Well. Um, obviously, in the MOU as it stands, and, and again, this is just kind of a preliminary right now, I guess, we'll work out those details. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the conclusion in there, it goes till February 1st, obviously, we give up uh, whether we want to continue that or not. And it was suggested that we possibly look at a six-month MOU kind of as a probationary period. Um, for the initial starting out, obviously, you've not worked with my department. Um, in, in this situation, so um, that was proposed to me. I'm not opposed to that. I want to make this a workable situation. Um, although I would caution because, uh, which I'd hope to talk to you maybe a little later in the meeting, but um, with the Homeland Security grants, um, which is some of the funding for the SRO and some other programs, um, you know, they, they're looking long term you know, in a year or so at a time. So if we just say, hey, we're doing this six months, um, that might call into question some of your, your grant opportunities as a school corporation. So I just throw that out there as something to consider too. But I have no problem going with a six month probationary, trying it out and see how things go. Do you uh, plan to post the job, hire a new officer and have them trained within the six months or do you plan to keep the officer that you've named as your SRO with us? Well, I think right now the best solution you've got and the, and the immediate need is to, to have skier. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, obviously we really haven't had a chance to sit down particularly because he's gonna be my employee. So um, at that point, I don't pay as much as the school corporation pays. So. I mean, he may say, hey, I can't live with that. And at that point, then we're going to have to go back and see if we can find somebody. I've got no one in my department right now that's trained as an SRO other than Scotty, which, uh, Wilburn, which he's assigned down at Caston. And uh, you know, <coughs> that commitment's already been made there. Um, we could have to probably go outside um, my current department mm -hmm. office from that standpoint. Um, there may be a possibility that you know, there's somebody that's within the community or, or outside the community that may be looking to, to retire from a PD or from a sheriff's office and then consider taking that. That I don't know yet, so. Any other questions? You're not opposed to looking? I'm not opposed to looking, but, um, you know, I think to be fair all the way around, I mean, we need to give it six months and try it and see how it works. <clears throat> That's what the board wants. The whole the whole idea with for the six months are up in my understanding that um, this was kind of thrust on us three weeks ago. We had no idea we'd have to even look at this. Right. So uh, six months being a time where um, you could look for someone else to fill that position, interview them, and it may be that uh, Skeeter is the one if he's interviewed at the same time. And at the end of that six months, then we'd make uh, make that for the next year for the MOU. That was the discussion behind all that idea of the six month instead of the year. Right. Because in, in all fairness, this was thrust upon us. We're kind of trying to make decisions in a very quick manner. And we felt that was a good compromise to go to six months and not commit to a year. Some, some sure. of us are uncomfortable with that. Does that fit in with your... <coughs> Like you said, I'll work with you whatever I can, Rick. I mean, I'm kind of the same boat you were, right. so to speak, on this. So, um, but you know, if that's what your wish is. But I think it has to be something that we're all comfortable with, obviously. And it's good to do the you know the, the good job doing this. So. So on page four in the MOU under supervision, it says the SRR is an employee of the school subject to supervision and instruction of the superior offices of Fulton County Chairs to office. So is it going to be an employee? Because you said it was going to be your employee. Which one? That's the direction my commissioner is obviously uh, as a sheriff and elected official 
um, I can make some appointments by virtue of special deputy and so forth, like we discussed at the board meeting. But the direction I'm getting, which I have to get approval through the board, um, the board of commissioners and the county council, because they said the, the number of deputies I can have. And that's what they're wanting me to go towards. As a matter of fact, they wanted to have something before the end of the year. If, if at all possible, that we would have someone slated in that position as a full-time employee. And so, like I said, I'm, I'm working, I guess, if you will, with them trying to see what options we have um, to, to go that route. So that's kind of where we're at. But this person, whoever it is, would still ultimately answer to you because yes. you have control of it's, their activities. Yes, from the standpoint. From the standpoint of saying I didn't mean to cut you off, but from the standpoint of from the law enforcement side, obviously, uh, again, it's a uh, it's communication, open lines of communication, and you know all I can speak to is what I have, the relationship I have with cast. You know, I'm, I usually talk to either the superintendent or the principals at least monthly down there. Cast. Um, does Scott call me every day? No, um, unless something comes up that hey, sure, if I need, you know this or he calls one of my sergeants on something but um, and what I'm talking about is anything you know major in general I'm speaking um, as far as criminal activity or you know direction on that um, understanding that the schools have their own policies and procedures that they follow as well but um, you know and we tried to address that in that MOU uh, that you have before you but at the same token if you know, they want him to work a dance or a football game Friday. That's they 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 handle that. You know, I you know that's the latitude that they have to be able to to take care of that um, as far as scheduling and that sort of thing. The only thing we ask and we point out in the FOU um, is under. I apologize. Um, Again, as far as our duties and responsibilities, it'd be 2.3. The um, way I, I view this is he's assigned. It would be any different than a road officer. If I have a special assignment or something and I assign him to that, that's what they go do. Um, he's going to be assigned to the, to the school corporation at this point. Um, so his duties and responsibilities, he will be restricted to the school campus except when there's any like follow-ups to home visits and that sort of thing that involves the, the school children um, or any related problems to that. School-related off-campus activities where this SRO participation is requested by the school and approved by the department. So, you know, what I'm saying is most of the time we, we work with that. If there's an activity that what the SRO to go to, you know, we try to flex our time and work through that. Um, Obviously, if we have a major response where it's all hands on deck, we need a police officer to respond um, to a police related or emergency type activity, um, then he's able to do that. Um, travel to and from the sheriff's office to utilize resources and to attend departmental, departmental trainings that uh, are other administrative duties that we can't do outside the school year, so which is not that frequent you know we may have a couple training sessions through the week that we had scheduled part of their training and the requirements firearms defensive tactics everything that they're required to keep their their uh, hours up to maintain the police police powers obviously um, so you know sometimes we have to schedule those through the week and usually that's you know maybe a couple hours or so so or department meetings that we would hold that I require everybody to attend that answer your question kind of long long way Sandy I'm yeah. sorry it's fine. I tend to get long-winded at times uh, sure Sandwich I have a question will you and maybe just for clarification purposes are you going to sit down with whoever this SRO is and say okay we're going to work out a schedule of what your your weeks look like or is it sure Jana is going to do that or is it just he does what he's whatever he need, wants to do. I mean, well, again, um, that's a collaborative effort. Um, but like I do with Scott, he's he's assigned. That's his assignment. He reports to school every every day. If they happen to have a day off because of uh, holiday or whatnot, 
what we utilize him then, and that's part of what we, we do or the arrangement we've had, um, then I use him on the roof. It, unless he has scheduled vacation or something along that line, we try to encourage um, with, with Scott at that point. To, when the school calendar permits, if it's like spring break, Christmas break, or any holidays that the school would, would recognize, and that's when he tries to work his, his time off as well. So he's here when the school's in session. And you know, like in the summertime, again with Scott, what we've done with him is, you know, school's out, he, he works a schedule just like he did when he worked the road as a deputy. And so we use him to fill in for other officers that are off. But for the most part, again, um, like I said, they, they kind of they give me a heads up. Hey, this is the the schedule we have. If there's special activities, we want him to be there. Yes, I'm <coughs> made aware of that. But as far as you know, this day, this is you know, not necessarily. I kind of leave that to the discretion of the principals in the, the school administration. So, okay. one of the things I, I guess I'll just add real quick. One of the things. With the system that we're going to be on, and, and, and then the MOU, we'd ask that um, the school provide the, the laptop and that. Um, we have a, what we call a, a Spelman, it's a mobile data system. Um, over the years, we kind of brought our office up to the 21st century, so to speak, um, with some of the, the uh, technology that we hadn't had. And with this, if there's any incidents, and this is part of our operating procedures, you know, he would log those so I can, I can pull up my desk and see what activities he's doing as well. So if that helps, we can track stuff that way. Um, the other thing, we, we do log daily logs, we do daily logs. Um, you know, we can do it that way as well so I can track activity and what, he's, what activity is going on as far as that office. So. so to clarify, you'll know what he's doing each day. Pretty much. I mean, like I said, I'm not necessarily going to be standing over his shoulder going, you know, are you doing this? But, but uh, you know, at the same token, yes, I'll, I'll pretty much know what's going on. And we've got those defined in our operating procedures. So. Do you view that as a, as a support measure? For your SRO? Absolutely. You know, if uh, I, I'll just give an example. Um, you know, I had a new officer start, and periodically we'll, we'll pull some of the reports and review those. I review them personally. And we had a certain investigation, and, and you know, I'm sitting through there. For the most part, he did pretty good, but then there were some things that I had questions, and you know, um, unfortunately, as a police officer, we got to think kind of like a defense attorney, especially if there's a crime that you're going to sit there and have to go to court over. So you're trying to think about all the questions <coughs> that are going to be posed to you, and your report is basically what you're saying what happened in that event. Okay, um, so you know, I reviewed that report and I made some suggestions and went through and sat down with him and counseled him on those and you know for the better I mean you know it's all constructive at that point so um, so yeah we'll use that as a, as a training guide as well okay any other questions okay well thank you sheriff sailors Appreciate you stepping up here and helping us out. Uh, looks like you've got an excellent uh, program here lined up. I know we had a chance to sit down and talk, and, and this man is passionate about protecting and serving, especially our kids. And uh, he has the opportunity you know, to work with surrounding counties, and uh, uh, he has some interesting things uh, and ideas that uh, look great. And uh, we're fortunate to have him. So thank you again. Okay. I've got some other information I'd like sure. to give you. Yes. Can we do it now or I can wait Go ahead and do it right. a better time? Okay. We've got a few handouts and some of you board members remember, I don't know, probably a year, two years ago now, I think we were over at uh, Columbia, Columbia mm -hmm. and presented you some information. <coughs> you would just take one and mm -hmm. pass it down. Yeah, this is what you were talking about. I 
I treat I kill a lot of trees. <laughs> So what I'm passing out to you, so the audience knows as well, um, I guess I'll start out with the Indiana Department of Homeland Security uh, Notice of Funding Opportunity. This is something that came out as a result of House Bill 1225, um, and I think at the last uh, work session I mentioned uh, Sheriff Dave Reynolds up in Porter County. He's kind of been the champion of this, and um, has uh, gone down to the state house and testified, got a lot of uh, legislative support behind it. But I know there's a lot of information, but I'm, I'm just handing this to you so you can read it at your leisure. But one of the things of uh, House Bill 12, 1225 was um, you turn to page 10, it talks about an active work system. And if you recall, uh, Governor Holcomb, they ended up put an additional like 18 million, I think I said 12 million last time, it's almost 18 million dollars that they funded in the budget this, this next year. And, and I see that as continuing, especially after the situation we had in Noblesville. Um, that hit home pretty quick. You know, we have a lot of, you hear about it in the national news, you know, unfortunately I, I had to set through the Sandy Hook debrief, um, happened in Connecticut. Um, didn't want to be there, didn't want to sit there and listen to it but I'm glad I did. That's the best way I can describe it. I learned so much, and I learned so much about things that they didn't do or they did do uh, well to, to uh, help with that situation. Then about six months later, I sat through and listened to the Boston police chief talk about the bombing huh. marathon, the Boston Marathon. And again, it was one of those, I didn't really want to sit there and listen to it, but I'm glad I did because you look, I guess, in hindsight, you learn from mistakes made, and that hopefully makes us better. Am I right, Brad, on that? It's so. tough to sit through, but they're completely enlightening. So anyway, with the active learn system, this is one of the things that I had actually asked for a meeting with Superintendent um, Vance and Superintendent Douglas Caston to meet Friday, this Friday jointly, to discuss this. Obviously, the grant at the school applies. Um, but one of the requirements, as you can see through there, is a collaboration um, with the appropriate county sheriff to apply for the funding for the initial cost. When I addressed the board a couple years ago, I was willing to, this is how strongly I believe in this, I was willing to find the money in my budget or elsewhere, make borrow and steal donations, whatever, to see if we could get that in all the area schools. It's, it was an initial $1,000 per building. After that, after that initial setup, there's a monthly service fee of roughly about $100, I believe it is, or something like that, which would, the school would be obligated to, <coughs> to continue. Um, I know Kosciuszko County Sheriff uh, Dukes, Kyle Dukes over there, just got that in the Kosciuszko County Schools. Porter County had it for a couple years, and just real, real quick, um, I know Jasper County has it, and uh, in uh, Kankakee Valley School District, Wheatfield, um, the teachers, if they can, they'll have the app on their phone, and it's quicker than 911. I know my 911 director doesn't like to hear that, but um, <laughs> it is quicker than 911. There's a test mode, and then there's an active mode. The teacher thought she had it in test mode, he or she, I should say, and she actually had it in the active mode, and when she activated it, every police officer that has the app, and it's called Hero 911, um, within about a 50 mile radius gets an alert. So whether you're on duty, off duty, doesn't matter if you're a local police officer, a county police officer, a state trooper, uh, FBI, Secret Service, doesn't matter. Any law enforcement officer that has this, he's gonna get notified within about a 50 mile radius. I was told that there was an off duty officer about four blocks from the school. He was there in two minutes or less, okay? Within seven minutes, they had over 150 police officers screaming <laughs> down State Route 49 to Wheatfield, and Lake County had their chopper in the air. Oops. Okay. So it was oops, but it was a good drive around, a good test. It worked. Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, they you know they they didn't have an incident. It, it was a mistake, but you know you had the cavalry coming, and that's what you want. Okay. So with that. Um, 
like I said, um, the biggest thing is uh, the, the supplier of this is School Guard. Should have had a color pamphlet in there, kind of list uh, what it is. It automatically speed dials 911. It, it brings up on our, the responding officers, it brings up on their phones a map with the location, even if possible, a diagram of the building and pretty much the location within proximity, as good as technology can be with GPS. Um, where it alerts where the incidents happen, generally we're talking school shooting situations. It also instantly alerts all teachers and staff members and instantly alerts all participating schools within five miles. So um, a lot of times I know if there's an event that happens, we had a situation about three or four nine, my first year I was sheriff, um, we had a possibility of a, a, a an individual said he was gonna shoot up a school. We get a phone call. I think Rochester Schools got a phone call. The principal of Casting got a phone call. It was from an independent watch dog group out in Washington, D.C. that monitored social media. And so I know Rochester went on lockdown, I believe, and Casting went on a soft lockdown. Um, I notified the Cass County Sheriff, the Pulaski County Sheriff, the Kosciuszko County Sheriff. We had all the schools. Marshall County had all the schools and we were able to work with the IT department and backdoor his account and get a picture of this guy. And so we forwarded out to different schools and go, do you recognize this as one of your students or former students? Ended up the kid was from Rensselaer, two counties away, and by that night he was in custody. So he had made some, some threats on the social media. I'm saying that this stuff is taken seriously and we follow up seriously on this. And so, Anyway, but uh, it gives the benefits, features and benefits on the back of that. And again, I also included the email and um, School Guard is the actual name of it. Um, I'm not here to sell it, but that seems to be the, the one that everybody's um, going to. It was developed by uh, Illinois State Trooper and it's proven that it's worked. So um, I would ask that you um, consider pursuing that grant. Um, again, the money's there. It's through a grant. The system's proven itself. Um, the last thing, and again, if I'm re being redundant on some of the board members have seen this, again, I go back to Dave Reynolds, Porter County. Porter County went to a one county, one protocol system. And it's simple. It's easy to follow. It actually goes with the uh, um, so every school in Porter County, whether it's a private school, public school, what have you, um, the purpose of it is to everybody's on the same page. So if we have an emergency situation, whether it's an active shooter situation, whether it's a medical emergency, whether whatever it could be, a natural disaster, what have you, um, the protocol is the same. And obviously some of the legislation that passed now is we have to conduct, um, when we do the, the fire drills, if you will, that you're required to do every month, that we've never had a fire in most schools since 1958, but that's part of what the rules are. But now what they've included is there has to be a active shooter drill as well. That's legislative change now. Um, so the protocol they have is lock, down, lock out, lock down, evaluate, and shelter. Um, which kind of goes along with the Alice training. I'm an Alice instructor, my detective an Alice instructor. I think Skeeter's an Alice instructor um, from that with the training he's had. But um, basically the, 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 four, the four directives are that, and what it does is everybody, whether it's EMS, whether it's fire, whether it's law enforcement, whatever, we all know what those protocols are. So we're all talking the same language because obviously when you have an event, there's mass confusion. Um, I've attended some active shooter training um, in some other counties and it was total chaos. Um, we conducted one at Caston a few years ago. Um, actually, I'd asked Brad Weaver, I'm going to pick on Brad, but I asked him to participate and put some of his resources in. And Brad, I, you know, I thought it went well. Students were involved, administration was involved, it went very well. It was a, basically a full scale active shooter drill. And that hot too. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, it was hot. Um, I had uh, we had 36 police agents, 36 police officers there 
from probably about 12 different agencies. So it wasn't just Fulton County. We invited surrounding counties. The idea being, especially with CAST, and especially here in Rochester. I mean, if we have an active shooter event, you're gonna have Fulton County, Rochester PD. You're probably gonna have Pulaski County, Marshall County, Cass County. I mean, you're gonna have different state police. You're gonna have different agencies respond. I'm the first to admit, I don't probably know 25% of the staff here. I don't. Um, Caston, I probably know about 80%, but not everybody's been through the buildings. At Caston, I had guys go, hey, I've never been in this building before, no reason to, unless they had kids there or they were there or something. So we did a walk through the buildings. We did some scenarios. Um, we did two days training with the, the police officers, broke them up in two days. Um, and then on a Saturday morning, we did a live exercise. It was our county EMA exercise, what we have to do, and it's including with uh, hazmat. So you have to have some type of hazmat situation. We created a fire so the fire department could play, and we had EMS there, and, and we actually had active, active shooters, and we included Woodlawn Hospital on that because they're part of it. Um, you know, if we have a mass scale casualty of, of such, you're going to have probably four area hospitals in, involved, depending on the number of, I hate to say victims, but the number of people that may be injured in that. So, you know, we were trying to think outside the box on that. And so, you know, this is one of the things that, again, um, getting back to the, the SRO position, we want to work and make sure we were able to accomplish that as well, um, training wise. But one of the things I'd like to consider, and I've talked to a couple other sheriffs about this as well, and they're kind of on the same page as me. Um, I talked to Ed Schroeder down in Cass County. Um, just last week we talked about it, and he's in the opinion too, because he's got three school districts in his, his county. He's got Lewis Cass Pioneer and Logan Sport. And, um, you know, same thing. If they have an event, more likely we're going to be running down there to assess. I mean, we're all not large enough to, to do it on our own, so we rely on each other to help. And, you know, I've got three school districts in my county as well with the Akron Elementary School, so I've talked to Sheriff Dukes quite a bit about it. And, you know, I think we're all kind of in agreement that this is something <coughs> we seriously need to look at. So whether I'm responding to, to Akron, Akron Elementary or Pioneer High School, we're all on the same page. But obviously, Caston, I've talked to them some about it as well and they're, they're in the process with their safety, school safety committee move in that direction. And it's real simple. Um, you'll see different colored pages here with the different things, um, the run, hide, the fight, defend, lock down, lock out, seek shelter for the different events. Um, a lot of what we're, we're, is recommended is, you know, you print these up and you post them in the hallways in the classrooms. So all you have to do is look at it and go, okay, well, we've got a weather-related event. What do I do? You know, it's like an emergency plan condensed, okay? So, um, again, this is something I would like to see Rochester do as well. And so everybody's on the same page when it comes to that. So I'll, I'll sit down now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. A lot of good ideas. On the one county, uh, one protocol, how would the school corporation work with you on that? Again, we would sit down, um, and this is something else I would like to, I, I mean, we we have a county-wide meeting of each once a year. Um, one of the things I'd like to see us do is a little more often, um, especially to address some of these. Each school has their own safety meeting. I attend Rochester, I attend Castens. Um, I've been to some of Valley's. Um, um, basically was assigned to that one after we had the tragedy back in October with the school bus. But, uh, um, you know, I think it's just open communication and try to implement some of this. And it takes, obviously, the administration and the board to say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Um, because sometimes, I guess our role is defined as emergency services, and some get overzealous with it, but, you know, just like with school security, if the door is supposed to be locked during school hours, it needs to be locked, you know? And, you know, we've run into that at some other schools where, well, the kids come and go out this back door and they prop it open. Well, that defeats the whole purpose from that standpoint. So we have to have buy-in from the administration and from, 
from the board um, to say, hey, we're committed to doing this. This is what we need to do. So I guess that's where I'm heading with that, Tom. Okay, thank you. So. Okay, any other questions from the board? Okay. Um, we'll be moving forward and voting on the MOU. At this time, I'd like uh, each board member to have the opportunity to make a statement. Uh, each board, board member, member uh, for courtesy, uh, don't interrupt, uh, ask questions. Uh, we'll each have opportunity to speak on the, on, on the uh, MOU that was presented. And, uh, and I'll make my closing statement uh, when we do. Now, you don't have to speak if you don't want to. Yeah. Before you start, if I may, based on the sheriff's comments, if I'll, I'll walk you through okay. the editorial changes we'll make. On the, on the first page under paragraph one, purpose, in the second paragraph, the second line, where it says uh, <coughs> involves the appointment of school, one full-time school resource officer by the school, we'll change that to Fulton County Sheriff. And then in the pursuant to uh, Indiana Code 2026-18.2-2A, where it says one, that will convert it to three, which means it's deployed by a law enforcement agency. Um, under under <coughs> duties and responsibilities, uh, item number two, we've got a uh, 2.2, and then below that we've got a uh, 2.3, but actually that should say 2.2.1 for police powers. <coughs> We'll change that number. Um, continuing to Article 4, Supervision, which I think uh, Stacy said was paragraph, page 4 on mine is about page 5 or 6. The top of the uh, first paragraph under number 4, Supervision, the SRO is an employee of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, subject to the supervision and instruction of the superior officers of the Sheriff's uh, Office. And for some reason in that paragraph, uh, somebody misspelled Sheriff several times, and I didn't catch it as we were going through it, but I see at least three misspellings. There is only one R in the middle of Sheriff, I know that. But apparently word doesn't because it didn't highlight. It. It's the old English word. <laughs> And those would be the editorial changes I would make to this. I would make one other comment. The uh, contract is designed as a, a, a contract that is re renewed every year by uh, inaction. So it's designed that by February 1st, somebody notifies somebody else that we've got a problem and we need to make a change. If there's no notification, then the contract rolls over the next year subject to budgeting. So it's not a one, not a one month, six month, one year contract. It's it's the contract for the future, subject to being modified, as it's set now, subject to being modified uh, in February for the following school year. If the board decides by a vote tonight to amend that, change it. We'll make that editorial change at that time. But the one you're talking about right now is a consistently renewing contract on a one year basis. And Ted, so as I understand it, the way it reads is if there were some um, issue that needed to be addressed, it could be addressed before February 1st. It could be addressed, you know, at, at any time, exactly. basically. If, uh, if the then appointed school resource officer goes on to a, an illness, the contract calls for the sheriff to appoint somebody else to take that place, to, to provide a, the, the school system with someone. If the school has concerns, if the board has concerns, if the sheriff has concerns, uh, you know, it's a position contract, it is not a person contract. Correct. Thank you for that what, what is a proper protocol for a board member to relay a concern to the sheriff? Uh, any board member having a concern a, a board acts through the board itself, so no one board member has standing to uh, go out of the boundaries of bringing something to the whole board. Um, as an example, if a board member doesn't like the uniform that the officer is wearing, since we had a uniform issue before, it's not up to that board member to say, make him change the uniform. 
if it is a decision of the entire board, or at least four members of the board, that that's a problem, then the board votes, and then the board president and the administration take it on over. Um, the board always acts as a body, and no any no individual board member, including the president, acts on their own. Right. Okay. So if there's a problem, just bring it to the whole board. Bring it to the board. It's discussed at that point. Any other questions? <coughs> Okay, no other questions. Uh, anyone would like to make a statement? Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine too. So. Okay. Guy, you want to start? I can start, yeah. Um, I'll be the first to say that uh, school, school safety is utmost concern to me. Um, I'll be personal about it. I got a wife in a building, I got a son in another building. Um, I care about all the kids, care about all the staff, care about the administration. Um, I also care about things being done the right way at Rochester schools um, and I want things to be done the right way I don't want us to be in the community as a bad school corporation I want to be a great school corporation um, I've been pretty vocal and I am not pleased at all with this MOU and I will not favor this MOU um, but I, I do want to find a way I know the city pushed us in a corner by pulling the rug out, but I want to find a way to get comfortable with an MOU going forward. I want our staff, I want the kids, I want everybody to feel secure. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Okay, thank you. Joe, question? Yeah. What are you uncomfortable with for the most part? Rick, uh, we're not going to question each other. Oh, we're not going to help you. Okay. Final statement. Thank you. I don't mind answering, but it's up to you. Then. Yeah, I don't mind answering at all. I I want a six month MOU. I've made it clear. I'm not going to hide it. I want a six month MOU, and within that six months, I want the sheriff to find a new resource <coughs> officer. I want him to train a resource officer and have ready for a resource officer for the school corporation. I am on board with that 100%. I don't want to leave our doors exposed, but I don't want to be an asset to the problem that we have now or just continue with it so that's why I'm at. Joe? I would echo basically what Kyle said. Um, I'm, I'm personally after several meetings and conversations that we've all had I'm, I'm still uncomfortable with with the current MOU. Uh, Sheriff Sailors thank you for mm -hmm. for all the time you put into it. Um, I would agree. I would like to see something uh, more in line with a six-month um, term looking at trying to hire another individual. Um, so that's kind of my, my point. I'm, I'm not in favor of this one. Great. No comment? Jenny? Thank you, Sheriff, for his time and his effort and his passion for school safety. I feel very strongly that if we as a board are saying that we want our um, to in partnership with law enforcement to run the program that then we trust the professionals that are running the program mm -hmm. and I feel like this MOU does a really um, good job at for setting up that if there are any issues ways to address them in a proper way I also feel like the communication that we've had with Sheriff Sailors has been very, he's been very responsive. When called and asked, he gets back um, very quickly um, with our board president, and that is an asset. I think that he brings um, a passion for the SRO position, but also a passion for greater issues of school safety, and I um, thank him and our board for their efforts to move forward. Okay, Sandy. I just want to thank Chris for all the time that you've put in Sheriff Sailors to this. I, like Connor said, I have someone in all four buildings. So my my priority is the safety of those students, and that's from day one. That's not if you promise to do this. I trust your judgment. Emphatically, I trust your judgment. I just want an SRO in our buildings on the first day of school. Stacy? No comment? Okay. Okay. 
I'll close with this. As we decide on the direction of the MOU, there's one thing that should be paramount in our decision, keeping our students and staff safe. I'd like to go through the events of this process from my point of view. As you can imagine, the school board and staff are taking very serious the statements made in the Sentinel article on Tuesday, July 16th. Fortunately for the citizens of the school district and students of the corporation, after a thorough review, the several misstatements or misunderstandings found in the report only reinforced my comfort with the actions taken by the RMS staff and the administration in the serious but unsubstantiated allegations made by a student. Those allegations were promptly investigated by the State Department of Children's Services investigators and found to be unsubstantiated. The school SRO Skeeter Doherty supported that investigation but did not lead or interfere with the investigation in any way. The city's later decision to investigate a comment by a student about a second student was also supported by school employees, although the SR SRO was left out of that investigation and that too was unsubstantiated. Mr. Doherty's role as a city police office reserve officer, given him the arrest powers needed to act as an SRO, is the same as it's been for five years when the city proposed the existing, existing SRO agreement and put Mr. Doherty in that position. At no time during the four renewals of the agreement was the board advised of any concerns on the part of RPD or the city administration. I do not believe that the school administrators were advised of RPD concerns either. The only issue raised was what style of uniform the SRO was to wear. As president of the RCSC school board, I appreciate that Sheriff Sailors is supporting the school corporation and is willing to provide the safety that our students and staff deserve. The board will do all it can to make this relationship work to the advantage of our patrons. In order for the board to make the decision that they will be comfortable with, we called in key witnesses to answer questions they had. They came in and swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. With swearing in, they were risking their job and reputation. My faith and respect in them was reinforced. I extended the same offer to the city and they refused. My hope is that the city sees the new MOU, they will consider their offer as two SROs would only double our desired goal. So now we must make a decision board. Have a new MOU that has been crafted by our Sheriff, County Prosecutor's Office, and our Board Attorney that is designed to answer the concerns that we in the city had. Or two, no SRO and extra security for our students and staff at this time. So I ask with all the debating of the issues, who's watching the kids? With that, I'm asking the board to make a motion to adopt the new MOU. We have a motion to adopt the new MOU. So moved. Motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Jenny. All in favor? Okay, motion carries. Or all opposed? Three. Okay, motion carries four to three. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Superintendent business. I want to again thank Sheriff Sailors for all of his hard work and all of the efforts that uh, the team put into that and uh, the board included. Just want to remind everybody, intercession is going on right now. We've um, serviced about 75 to 80 kids today. If you have students that you uh, still want to get enrolled, please contact those building level principals. We'd be glad to work with you and get those students here for intercession. I want to thank Matt, uh, Scott Kissler and his crew for our matchbook sales. As of the conclusion of today, we have sold $67,550 worth of technology to the community. That's just right at what we need to make uh, our first Apple payment. We'll continue with Apple sales again tomorrow. And then, Oscar, correct me if I'm wrong, next Thursday is your Riddle to Middle Day. Yeah, so first. Looking to forward to having those students in and making that transition. And please be looking in the paper. We'll be uh, publishing transportation routes and getting ready to launch a new school year. All right, thank you. What time is the right on the middle day? Uh, we'll start at 8 a.m. with iPad handout, and at 8.30 they'll follow their schedule. We'll feed them at 11.30. They can be picked up 
Eleven forty-five to noon. Any other questions? And the food, the lunch is free that day. Would you clear that? <laughs> 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 Oscar, our lunch is free, at, or is the school lunch program at, at the middle school this week? Then is that correct? Yes. Any other questions? Okay. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. We'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And you all stay. <laughs>